this is the continuation video of the Petrick method because in the last video we started solving the Quinn McCluskey problem. This is what we solved, and we need to find we need to find the min terms. Uh, sorry, we need to cover the min terms five and seven. These two are left out. So with this par part we stopped, and if you find with the normal method, so in order to solve this five. So there are two terms in order to solve sorry cover the seven there are two terms when i check with these two terms i can use any of these two because both are three variable when i check with the seven there are two i can use any of these two so which one normally we'll be choosing we'll try to check with less number and ma maximum number of min terms it covers right as of now all these three are of three variables so there is no question of less than this but what can be the best here is when i scan through these two columns so this term will cover both of this so what i can do i'll choose this and i'll write the solution as b bar c bar plus c d bar plus a bar b d is the best solution this is how we do it so this problem looks very simple we can do it but many a times we end up like these multiple cross marks for each of the main terms so it will be very tedious to choose which one and also any problems many problems can have multiple solutions what are all those solutions so many a times it will be asking the question find out all minimum possible solutions at that time we go with this Petrick method. Now, what is that Petrick method? How I go with? Till here, there is no change in the Petrick method. First part, you simplify these things. So, all these comparisons you do it, find out all the prime implicants, then move on to the next part, prime implicant chart. Scan through the columns, find the essential prime implicants. All these things you should follow the same. Now, what is an additional thing now is so once you find out all the prime implicants, so essential prime implicants, what all it covers, this has been covered. So I'll cross out this. This has been covered, I'll cross out this. So like that, we will cross out all the things. Now these are the essential prime implicants. Now we need to go with the next method. We'll cross out all the things which has been covered. Now because of this, it covers all these four terms, right? So we cross out this. Then because of this, it covers all this. We cross out this. So and once we cross out this, it also use this not required. So cross out that also. This also been done. Cross out that. This also been done. Cross out that. So what all has been covered? You cross out all those main terms. Once I cross out all those, what is left out now is five and seven, which is uncovered. Now discard all these one which has been crossed out retain only these things which is not covered that's it so write down the next chart with the contents which has not been covered so these three terms are required and these two main terms are not covered so list out this now name these terms which are left out so I'll name it as P1, P2, P3 like that names will be given for all these terms now. So I've named it the first row elements as P1, second row element P2, third row P3. Now once I list out all this, what is the next thing? Now in order to find the final solution for this problem, so suppose if I consider my final solution, how I'm going with so I need to consider this essential prime implicants along with this essential prime implicants, which is the best one out of this. That's what I'm going to find it out. So next, I'm going to use, this is my final solution. Y is equal to essential prime implicants plus P. What is this P is? This P is the prime implicants, all these prime implicants which I have. I'll be using these prime implicants in order to cover the left out main terms. That's why I've written this as P. Now, write down this P. What is this P is? 
in order to cover phi, I have two terms. So, what are those two terms? P1 and P2. So, right? So, P1 plus P2. And for this 7, there are two terms. P2 and P3. So, P2 plus P3. So, for 5, P1 plus P2. For 7, P2 plus P3. So, these. So, with this solution. So, it covers all the main terms in the given problem. This is equal to 1. Because it is covering all the main terms in the given problem. Now, I need to further simplify this step. How I go with this simplification? We use this distributive law. Distributive law x plus y into x plus z. So, x plus y into x plus z is equal to x plus yz. So, what is this now? a plus b into a plus c, a plus bc. That's how you're going to write it. So, now here p1 is here like b or p3 is here like c. So, this is like an a, right? So, now I can write p2 plus p1 p3. This is the solution. So, once I find this, further it cannot be simplified. This is the final step. So, what is this P1, P2, P3, all these things, what is it referring is? This is one solution. So, that is P2. Means you use this 5, 7, that is one solution. Or else, you use this solution. Means you use this P1, that is A bar, C bar, D, which covers 5. And P3, that is A bar, B, C, which covers 7. So, either you use this single term or you use these two terms together in order to find the solution for this. Means, for this problem, we have two solutions. These terms indicates number of solutions. So, which is best here? How we choose that best number of these terms in each of the solutions? So, here only one term. Here, two terms, P1 and P3. And number of terms you need to check with. And then in each of this term, how many variables? Suppose if you are using three terms here, two terms here, and the number of variables are more in this two terms, number of variables in this three terms are very, very less. So we could go with this like that. You can choose it. How many terms in each of the solution? How many variables in each of the solution? So, then you can choose the best one. So, best solution is P2. So, write along with this essential prime implicants P bar C bar plus CD plus P2 is A bar BD. A bar BD. There are two possible solutions and the best solution is this is the one. So, this is how you are going to solve the problems in the Petrick method. So, Petrick method is useful to find the uh, minimum, many, uh, sorry, how many number of solutions for this problem and how many best solution for the problem. So, with this, I will wind up this video. Thank you.